we're going to talk about the code of silence among realtors. I've been reading about people talking about this online and wondering if there's a code of silence among realtors like there is cops and some other groups. They say that if the realtors were actually to talk about what really goes on, then they would lose a lot of business. That's true. And I could not do regular real estate and speak out like I am. I would, well, fail miserably. But what I do is internet marketing. So I definitely have to say that they do... <laughs> I had this one house where I got sworn statements from... Um, gosh, like six muckety-muck realtors in town talking about how perfect the house was, you know, how good it was. And they were all clueless. They just all stood up for one broker, like, you know, like a pack of wolves trying to take down the real estate consumer. It was quite shocking. So there is a code of silence among realtors. You know, we don't, they don't talk about, you know, the boycotts. You just, you hear these things now and then, but they don't talk about issues of the title insurance. They don't talk about how they actually recommend title companies and lenders and all the affiliations and the kickbacks and the, the game and what they say behind closed doors about your divorce or your illness or what you'll take for the property. You know, all of these things come down to just little mini or bigger negotiations and <clears throat> there's definitely a code of silence in real estate. But I'm breaking that. I quit the National Association of Realtors and I'm going to tell you guys everything I can think of and then some and check out realestateindustrywhistleblower.com and you know email me crystal at crystalcox.com if you have some questions that you need answered about what's going on with your real estate transaction as a realtor we swear to not interfere in other people's transactions but i recommend you get someone to interfere you know you need a real estate consultant i don't care if you have a buyer's agent and a seller's agent and all these fancy accreditations that nar puts out of course, we know NARS and AR. I think you should get a real estate consultant that's paid an hourly wage by you so they can give you objective information that's not based on whether you close the deal or not. I think buyer's agent and seller's agent is outdated. I think you should sell without a realtor and be a for sale by owner and, you know, heck with the code of silence among realtors that affects your life, your money, your health. <laughs> that's just sick. And hire yourself a broker consultant or a real estate consultant and, you know, just get someone else's opinion on the contract. Even if you have a family member look it over. I mean, a lot of times red flags will jump out at family members or somebody that cares about you that you weren't seeing because you fell in love with the property or the realtor, you know, spun their eyes and hypnotized you and mesmerized you. You know, so I could, um, if, if you come and look at property with me and I start quoting all of these prices of where everything is sold and I start telling you everything's coming into the area and basically I got a lot of things on top of my head. If you, I know, you can imagine. I just, yap, 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 yap. You're so distracted and mesmerized by everything that I'm saying. I'm not really giving you any room to think and you're not making good decisions. So, you know, and that's why I recommend never buy that day. A lot of people look at the property like, oh, we've got to hurry this day. Well, the deal of a lifetime is, is every day. If you're being rushed and pushed, Walk away. Always take an overnight to think about it. And if you're, you know, a couple, a lot of times a couple and they're driving, the, they teach us as realtors to get you in the same car and keep you there because we can keep talking to you, talking to you, talking to you, right? Just keep pummeling into you that what property's good and, and telling you what property's um, overpriced and, you know, basically steering you to the decisions that we want you to make. I tried to always tell my, my buyers, no, you, you can't sign today. We, you know, we have to do it tomorrow. You have to. And I always told them, you know, I know people wanted to be cheap with gas, and so I'd say, you can drive with me if you want, but I encourage you to drive behind me so you can talk about me. Of course, that would always make them laugh, but you get to know an area more if you drive. Okay? Now, when you leave a property, you want to discuss what I've said to you. You know, so you can talk with your partner, business partner, spouse, life partner, whatever. You want to be able to visit about what was said, what I said, and come to good conclusions in between properties and you don't want me just yammering about the area or my life or just talking to you a bunch of you know baloney or we're just just making small talk or talking fast and, and keeping you all distracted so you can't think and then when the day's over you need to go if you're just in town you need to go to a motel you need to whatever it is you need to have an overnight to think about what you've seen the sellers get so mad at me they're like i heard them they wanted the property. They really wanted it. They loved it. And, and then, you know, we get outside and then the seller hears me tell them, well, I didn't even ask them if they wanted it. 
I just I showed them the property, I answered their questions, and then I said I would see them tomorrow. Okay? Or I'm say or I like say call me. You know, let me know, email me, call me. Let me know if you have any other questions. I know they want it. I know 100% that they want that house, but I'm not going to push them to sign and I'm not going to drag them down to the real estate office and have them sign that day because I want them to make sure because I don't want to hurt them. Ooh, our sellers are just, they just get livid mad. They, they chew me out they, before the, I'm even off the property. They call me at the office. They're like, why didn't you get them to sign? They wanted the property. Well, I'm not like that. So don't let your realtor push you into signing. I don't recommend you sign. I mean, I know there's different situations, but at least take three hours, okay? Take some time away from the showings, away from the realtor, away from attorneys, away from title insurance people, just you and the people that are actually going to be on the property before you make an offer. And during the escrow period, I would suggest that you stay in the area and you see the property more than 20 minutes. That's in some other videos. But check out realestateindustrywhistleblower.com and have a great day.